What's up, guys? You're watching Knights of the Card Table, Episode 1, the inaugural edition, so to speak. And I'm joined this evening by published author and dig digital collectible guru, Alan Carr of Dapper Labs and NBA Top Shot. How's it going tonight, Alan? Thanks for joining me. Hey, it's great to be here. Um, I'm really excited to be on the inaugural episode here. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a fellow Vegas native and uh, and uh, really, really excited about what we've been building with Top Shot and um, been watching some of your videos covering um, both the sports collectibles and some of the alternative investments and, and stuff like that. And, um, uh, and and I'm excited to be able to, to, to come on and, and talk about it. Absolutely, man. And I appreciate you watching some of the content. I have a lot of fun making this stuff. So let's start with you. Tell me about yourself. What were you into growing up and what sort of started you on the path to where you are now? Yeah, so I've always been very creative. I've always been all about um, uh, like writing and drawing and um, making video games. Like I was I was programming uh, Mac uh, I had a, had a Mac 512K like when I was in elementary school and programming Apple IIe computers at, at, at oh, yeah. school, writing programs that uh, asked you your name. And then if you told them your name was Alan, then, then they'd say, wow, you're awesome. You know, <laughs> very simple <laughs> stuff. Um, and then uh, uh, all of that kind of parlayed into making video games. Um, so I, I was involved in a bunch of indie game development for the Macintosh games like Snake Quest and Midnight Mansion. Uh, I did graphics and level design and some game design for stuff like that. Um, this is all just kind of growing up stuff I did, interests and hobbies of mine. Uh, was able to go from there to actually join Blizzard Entertainment, uh, first as a game master for World of Warcraft back in the uh, vanilla and then Wrath of the Lich King days, uh, or Burning Crusade. Oh, yeah. uh, through, through Wrath of Lich King. And then uh, I ended up joining the web team there. And so I, I was the one who was creating those flash animations for the launcher um, uh, for, for uh, like Cataclysm and, 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 uh, nice. and that was a lot of fun. Um, and as you mentioned, I'm, I'm technically a published author. I eventually left <laughs> Blizzard so that I could try making iPhone games on my own. I uh, created a game called uh, Beatboxes, which was um, a lot of fun, but I had zero marketing and nobody knew about it. Um, and so uh, I wrote I wrote a novel, a young adult novel. I was like, all right, that's not working. Let me try something new. Self-published that. That was fun, but again, wasn't exactly paying the bills. So I ended Dragon up- Dragon Master. Um, that's right, <laughs> Dragon Master. Um, it's, it's a fun novel. It's supposed to be book one of seven and it's still just book one that's out. But you know, one day, one day I'll get around to writing the rest. Um, I-, I, I um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and so uh, I got a job working, you know, e-commerce, um, doing web stuff, and um, and then what happened was Crypto Kitties dropped, and this was like these weird digital breedable cats on right. uh, the blockchain. And I'd been watching blockchain, really interested in it, but not really involved in it. But the moment that um, that the Crypto Kitties dropped, I just I just like. I fell in love with the concept. I got obsessed. I started buying and breeding cats. I started um, like trading. I had a little bit of crypto and I, I converted it all into right. Ethereum, it all, uh, built up a huge litter of cats and then blew through all my budget. <laughs> and so I couldn't breed cats anymore, but I was still obsessed. So I built tools using some of my web design skills to help you figure out, hey, if you bred this cat and that cat together, what would come out? Anyway, that got the attention of Dapper Labs who created CryptoKitties. Um, right. Ended up interviewing with them and joining the team, and um, from there I worked on Crypto Kitties for quite a while, and worked on another game we released called Cheese Wizards. I've got a little Cheese, Cheese Wizards sticker here. Yeah, it was a fun uh, rock paper scissors style uh, winner take all battle royale for real money, and uh, it was pretty insane. I think I think there were hundreds. Was it? A, it was either ten thousands or a or hundred thousand uh, dollar prize to the person who won the whole tournament. It was a lot of fun, but it was also like insanely hard to pull off. We tried to do this all on Ethereum, the, the Ethereum blockchain, right. and that that was the point at which we were like, "This just doesn't work. The user experience is not friendly." We love the concept of blockchain, which the whole point of blockchain is is it lets you own something on the internet meaningfully and right. like, what everybody knows about is, is of course, um, 
Bitcoin, which lets you own money on the internet and spend money such that like if I spend it, I don't have it anymore. You know, unlike a, a GIF or something, I can send you a GIF and then send it to someone else and I still have it, right? It's actually scarce on uh, online, uh, proved by math and all this crazy stuff. So the principles were great, but the actual network wasn't, wasn't like, actually all that usable. So Dapper Labs built another network called Flow, uh, which is it aims to like solve those problems, have all the benefits, but then have upsides to it. And um, we wanted to launch that with a bang. And we, um, we were in talks with the NBA about creating this thing called NBA Top Shot. And they were very interested in exploring, um, you know, what it would mean to be able to have fans interact with something digital in a new and interesting way, a very right. official way. And um, we kind of, uh, we, we pitched them and they pitched us and we, we went back and forth and came up with this idea of what if you could collect plays, like the plays from the NBA games that, that, you know, um, you know, and love and, and, and what if those were scarce and you were ownable and, and, um, and it would be kind of like if you if you took trading cards, which is the idea of you know collecting players and, and right. like these photographs of players on cardboard, but like really brought it to the next level uh, because of course being digital, we can we can have the full multimedia experience, and that's where Top Shot sort of came from. And so Top Shot launched on this Flow blockchain that that we put together. It's a fully open public blockchain. Um, that just doesn't have all the limitations of something like Ethereum, but has all of the upside of, of everything like Ethereum and, and Bitcoin. And um, so the collectibles live on flow and they we, we were able to launch um, in a closed beta. Uh, last year obviously was a very weird year for the NBA and for everybody. Um, right. And, and uh, we, we were able to kind of in that environment launch a closed beta of NBA Top Shot to a few hundred people and see like, hey, does this resonate with people? And and oh my goodness, it did. Um, I think we sold like a million dollars worth of of packs Jeez. in the first. Like, two yeah, I, I wish I had gotten in on that. Yeah, yeah. Th those who got in, um, like, they they did very well for themselves because well, if see, you take a look at the, that million dollars worth of stuff that they bought, I think right. uh, is many millions of dollars worth on the secondary market. And that's one of those great things about blockchain is there's a secondary market um, and, and you can buy and sell these, these collectibles and you don't have to deal with grading services. You don't have to deal with eBay. You don't have to deal with the post right. office. It's, right there. it's instant. Yeah. It's right there. It's fully transparent. And um, it's it's a whole new it's a whole new world, and and I obviously love it. I'm super passionate about blockchain exactly. and about what we built here. Yeah, yeah. I I got lucky because I was a professional poker player. I have a friend who was also a professional poker player, and now what he does is trade crypto all day long. And I've basically been in the sports card collectible game. On you know that's what I've been doing. And he came to me and said, "Well, oh, this is funny because this is what we're both doing, but it's all collided together." So you need to check this out. And I saw it and I was like, you know, like atom bomb, garbage pail kids, my brain just exploded. And I was like, I need to get in on this. So why why basketball? Why not something else? There's so many things out there to choose from. What made you guys go or made them go crypto kitties into basketball? Absolutely. Yeah, that's that that's not the um that's maybe not the most natural connection. But right, right. Um, we we have some some team members that um have worked with the NBA and also um, the NFL uh, before on on some partnerships things and um, and and we had a games team we we had uh, one of the lead uh, uh, designers from from another sports game that that was like interested in finding the right sports license to kind of launch with one of the yeah. things that we knew is. Is that like the benefits are really real for the for the blockchain, like this real ownership stuff? It's it can be a little bit hard to wrap your your head around though for for people who aren't familiar with it, um, who haven't experienced you know like buying Bitcoin and then they hundred xing in value. Like right, once right, you've right. experienced that, you know it, right? <laughs> but um, a lot of people are like they're skeptical, and and it makes sense. But once you've experienced it for yourself, then then it becomes very real, and you understand that. And so we knew that we wanted to get 
kind of a world class, like super recognizable brand involved, mm -hmm. so that people could trust the brand. And um, there's really no better partner than the NBA. They're very selective about who they partner with. They right. do all the research, <laughs> um, and and they're super involved in the partnership. You know, it, it wasn't just like, all right, you guys go ahead and do a thing now. Like we're, we're right. gonna go ahead you know. and make some cups, put them at the gas station, sell some Slurpees. You know, it's not, <laughs> it's not just <laughs> exactly. Like that. Exactly. They're, they're very involved and they're very protective of their brand. And um, so we worked well for them. They were interested in blockchain and finding new ways to connect with, with fans, especially younger and more uh, digitally connected fans. And right. um, so, so they knew like blockchain was something they were interested in. CryptoKitties was the first mainstream consumer experience on blockchain. Um, right. It was still, you know, relatively rough compared to something like Top Shot, but there was nothing, anything, there's nothing at all like it before. There was nothing that actually caused, um, uh, you know, people to like investigate and, and get onto um, blockchain so that they could, you know, like breed cats, right? right, <laughs> that, right that was right. just such a crazy concept and it was so successful. So so they were like, all right, you guys seem like you know what, you, you, you have the ability to pull this off. We're interested in it. And we were looking right. for that global brand that that is worldwide, like really well known, um, you know, one of the top brands in the world. And so, and and with the sports connections that we had, it was just such a natural fit. Uh, we actually tried to do a um, a partnership um, with an NBA player for for Crypto Kitties as well, which which ended up falling through like <laughs> kind of last minute. There was some, oh, there was some yeah, as another story. But uh, we've been trying to get NBA and blockchain together since the early days, and um, and yeah, so it was, a, it was actually a pretty natural fit. Um, yeah. and, so, and so here we are. It just kind of feels to me like it's the next step. It's the evolution of just digital collectibles in general. People were skeptical when Path of Exile was selling people some sort of a helmet that looked really right. cool graphically because otherwise the guy's wearing a damn toilet bucket on his head. And then you have Blizzard. You know, it's not Magic the Gathering. Those are the physical cards, but it's, you know, Hearthstone. And you're buying all these cards that you can play the game, but you don't own them. You can't do anything with them otherwise. And now you can have all of that wrapped up into one package, which I think is the most attractive is the ownership aspect. Yeah, it's the best of all worlds, right? And and you've nailed it exactly. I collect magic cards. I play magic. I enjoy the game. Yes. But the fact that I have the physical <laughs> cards makes makes a, a big difference because like right. I feel like I'm getting value for all the money I'm spending. And it's, you know, it's an expensive hobby. Um, Absolutely. And, and and with Hearthstone, like I I don't feel like I have the same value there. Um, and and same with like yeah. League of Legends. I bought a bunch of skins, and now I'm like. Was that worth it? I don't know. It's um, but here, down, but it was cool. <laughs> exactly. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, but now with Top Shot, if I, if I ever change my mind, if I ever, uh, you know, need some money in a hurry, like I have these things that are worth a bunch of money and I can just instantly sell them and have have the cash. Um, and, and just that kind of peace of mind of knowing that like this is this is in some ways, like it feels like an investment, right? It's, it's. I mean, we, yeah. we don't view it as an investment, but like in in the in the fact that you can put money in and you're getting real value, you're not just um, you're not just getting an entry in someone's database that they can shut off at any point, like you are with the League of Legends skin. Exactly, and, and that's one of my questions: is when are people going to be able to take the moments? and actually take them and put them in their own crypto wallet, so to speak, because I know that's coming. Yes, um, so currently, whenever you buy a, a moment, it actually does go into your own wallet, but it's a custodial wallet. So we right. focused entirely on the user experience. Uh, we want someone who's an NBA fan, who's never even heard of blockchain to be able to come to NBA Top Shot, buy a bunch of moments, not even care or know that it's on blockchain. And on, all they need is a username and password. They don't have to you know, keep track of their keys and worry about the security aspect. If they right. lose their password, you can help them get in. So it's a custodial wallet. So right now, all the moments are in in those wallets. There are um, Flow does have support for hardware wallets, and um, there's also software wallets. So pe if people are familiar with something like CryptoKitties, we worked with uh, MetaMask first, uh, first and foremost, um, and then other digital wallets. Um, and so this is kind of similar. We work first here with Dapper, the custodial wallet, and then we um, we're we're going to be building in support for moving those 
those assets onto your hardware wallets, onto your software wallets on Flow, if you're interested. That's something that's still very much in development. We think it's, right. um, we, you know, it's we know it's important for people to like have that that like full custody of oh, their yeah. assets. Yeah. yeah, especially in this blockchain world, and especially when some people have uh, put in hundreds of thousands of dollars already into their collections. Like we we get that, and Crazy. we're we're working to support that. We've added like two factor authentication right now to your custodial wallet, so you can have that security and peace of mind. But um, yeah, it's still it's still an active development. Um, we're gonna get it done as soon as we can. But um, the, those wallets exist, and they they're supported on Flow, so that that's just kind of coming soon. <laughs> Yeah, now to touch briefly on the cash outs that are being rolled out, uh, there's the mm -hmm. bank transfer option, which is $25 per, and then also the Ether or the USDC, whatever that is, into an Ether wallet. Now there's gonna be people that are involved at all levels of Top Shot. So just like yeah. you said, for the user experience, uh, let's say I'm a guy who just throws like 100 bucks a week into cards, and I might wanna just get like a $80 cash out to take my wife to dinner, just you know, casual, average user. Uh, what do you tell them about the $25 for the bank transfer? Do you try to get them into the ether so they can do that cheaper? What's your approach there? Yeah, so that's just kind of the standard bank transfer fees. Um, right, of course. Like, definitely. Yeah, so so that, that's not like us taking anything that's just covering the actual cost. And, and no. part of the reason why we love blockchain is these legacy systems and you know the the traditional banks and, and all of that and like the speed at which they operate and the the fees and and just kind of it can be dinosaurs <laughs> and so yeah. um obviously sometimes you need money in in the dinosaur world you know uh like you said you want to take your wife out for, for dinner and so and so that's available to you and you and you can certainly um you know take that option and then we will do a bank transfer directly into your bank um, there's a bit of a verification process right now to make sure um, because because uh, because of the way like money on the blockchain works, um, uh, once you kind of have it, you can move it around um, uh, very easily. And so and so some people take advantage of that to like steal a credit card and then and then spend money and commit fraud. And we just have to make sure that's not going on. Um, right. Uh, just, regulations and all of that. So it can take it can take a little bit of time. So plan in advance. Um, you know, typically I, I hear that it takes like three or four days in most cases to, to get that cash out. And there is that that fee associated. So um, yeah. and just to be clear again, it's not it's not you top shot guys that are just taking money to get money to your right. bank. It's actually the bank's fee. And I know that from getting wire cash outs from poker, the bank actually charges that fee. So it's not them profiting off of it. And it's good to see that they're taking the steps necessary to make things as safe as possible for the users. Because we're dealing with so much money. You say you guys have hundreds of thousand dollars invested in top shot already. I mean, you know, clearly security is gonna be something that's important. So it's good to see those steps being taken. And you mentioned that there is the other option. If you don't want to pay that fee, you can withdraw into USDC. And what that is, is it's just a stable coin. One USDC is worth about a dollar. It, it can right. fluctuate like a few cents up and, up and down. But basically a dollar is a dollar. And then you have that money on the blockchain and you can, um, you can at that point, like, like there are uh, debit cards. Sometimes these appear and disappear. So I, I don't currently have one. But there, there are debit cards out there that let you uh, actually like spend money from um, from cryptocurrency or from from USDC and such. So there are ways around that if you're comfortable in the crypto world and you want to play around with it. And I would highly recommend anyone who hasn't played around in the crypto world. Like there's just so much opportunity. Um, there's there's always like these airdrops and and there's a lot of potential danger out there. You have to be careful, but um, there's also just a lot of opportunity to um, to have fun, experience new technology, and and sometimes just make a lot of money. And so it's worth playing around in that space if you're comfortable, and, and that can also get you a way around those fees because, um, yeah, there is no fee involved in, in getting your money out to um, uh, USDC. There you go, guys. You're going to have to get involved in the crypto world if you want to maximize your take. Now, you guys have already won a Samsung Best of Galaxy Store Award for the most innovative app. So congratulations on that. Uh, it's amazing to see how much fire Top Shot has around it. Did you expect it to happen? And did you expect it to happen this quickly? We had no idea <laughs> what to expect. Um, as I said, we launched in a closed beta in June to just a few right. hundred people. 
Um, we were really excited about the product. We'd only shown it to a handful of people and they were all very excited. Um, but you know, you just never know what to expect. And, and, um, but once we, once we actually released and, and people started buying the packs and, t and talking about the plays they were getting and getting excited about their pools and packs, um, we really got the impression that, yeah, like we, we hit what we were aiming for, for this, um, because um, one thing that I haven't talked about is I'm I'm a huge collector. I, I had mentioned that like I, I've got a ton of Magic: The Gathering cards. I've got a bunch of uh, sports trading cards, uh, Marvel trading cards. Oh, yeah. I've got you know, the, oh, yeah. the Funko Pops, <laughs> no, the whole thing. Um, uh, one reason that I got into the digital collecting is is because you know my house is filling up with actual goods. Got to sell over into the digital world. They don't take up space the same way, so that's nice. Um, but um, we, we really love collecting. Um, I personally really love collecting. And so we really wanted to nail that experience of being able to have like fun, interesting things to collect, make sure that we're, we're including like the fan favorite players who maybe aren't superstars, but you know, people just like, like the bull bulls, um, you know, right. what, what fun it is to open a bull bull in a pack. I um, love bull bull. I have so many bull bull cards. You have no idea. People don't know. I just have an absolute monster status of bull bull. I do. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So much fun. And so we wanted to make sure that we, we had all of that in the experience. And, um, and so seeing collectors really get into it and really get excited was, was huge to us. Um, and then, and so we opened those gates up and we started, um, we started inviting people who are NBA fans into the experience uh, because a lot of our early beta testers were people who knew us from Crypto Kitties and other um, other stuff we'd done like Cheese Wizards, and um, and we found that not everybody got it right away. Um, you know, uh, a, a lot of people a lot of people needed a little bit like like we to explain a little bit better because the original product that we had. Um, we were like, here it is. Don't you want it? Collect it. And, right, and it worked right. for the people who understood it already. But there were a lot of people who were like, didn't quite get it. And so what we've done is we've spent the past um, several months uh, really figuring out how to explain this to an NBA fan who doesn't have any experience with digital collectibles. Yeah. That um, was my next them. question. Absolutely. How do you convince the average sports card collector that Top Shot can be for them? And the most common things I hear in rebuttal to it are I like to hold the physical item and then I can look the moment up online. That's the biggest thing that people say. I can just look the moment up. What do you say to that? Yeah. So, um, uh, so, so like to that last point, you know, I, I can also like go on Wikipedia and print out uh, NBA players on, on a piece of cardboard and cut it out. I can even use the shiny cardboard <laughs> if I want, right? That's right. Um, but authenticity <laughs> it's it's the fact that there's real guaranteed scarcity right you, you know that there's only so many of those physical trading cards that exist um and that they're backed by the nba and by panini you know like they it isn't something that somebody just printed out on their home printer it's authentic it has real value because of that um that that um, kind of provenance uh, uh, in a way, and and we have that as well, right? We have we have this this official license both with the NBA and the NBPA, so the Players Association is hugely involved as well, um, and so that means that we have the actual players, um, you know, benefiting from these and and like. Uh, also uh, making sure that everything meets a certain quality level and, and is up to their standards, and so and so like. Yeah, you can watch a, a, a highlight clip on on YouTube, but um, that that just has nothing to do with owning the actual, the actual collectible item. of right. that highlight, you know, of that play, and then knowing, you know, that, that there's only a thousand people who can own this uh, particular play, for example, uh, and um, and that somebody is willing to pay you real money uh, uh, for it, right? And that absolutely. Like, to me, some of the some of the coolest thing is having a moment, having somebody offer me like uh, hundreds of dollars for it, and me being like, you know, I'd rather have the moment, and that's just right. that's just that's just real, yeah. and and I feel yeah. that. Um, and and as you start as you start like diving into it, and and you're like, oh, I'd really like this moment actually. Like this is a cool play. I'd love to be able to say I own it, and you're like. Whoa! I have to I have to drop how much money on the marketplace in order to own it. That kind of clicks for a lot of people. 
because at the moment that you want it and you can't have it unless you pay for it, you realize, right. ooh, now I want it more because now I can be the person that somebody has to pay in order to get it. And I can be the one who says, nah, nah, this is me. This is no, 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 I don't need that. I'll just see it save it for a rainy day. <laughs> Yeah. Well, right. That's the one thing I like about Top Shot is that you know the exact print run. There's no ambiguity. There's no guy from Panini just going, oh, we'll just print a million more. Down to the exact serial number of your collectible, you know the exact number that there are. And I would say that over time versus what could be the demand for these, that even with 3,500 of a common, it's probably going to be relatively low print run. And as this thing picks up speed and goes mainstream and more advertising, it seems like getting in now is a really gift on it honestly we're already seeing it right the the last um pack drop that we had um it sold out in less than five minutes um we, we had hundreds of people there trying to buy the pack some people trying to buy hundreds of packs and not being able to um and and so and so we're already seeing how like the the demand there is much higher than than the supply, <laughs> um, and and so over time we'll be having larger edition sizes to kind of make sure that there's enough that like people aren't like turned off from the product and like go away forever because they're like like I can't ever get one of these like that wouldn't be great right, but we right, do want right. we are ma maintaining that scarcity and that value you know we aren't we aren't going to come out and 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 well we we can't so the great thing about blockchain is there's rules encoded in code. In, in what are called smart contracts. And they're very much right. just like, like a legal contract, except uh, enforced by the blockchain, enforced by code, right? There's no loopholes. We can't break that contract. Um, right. Once we say we can never print another one of these, we can never print another one of these. Like it just can't happen. And so in the future, like you say, um, commons can run up to like 3000 or so right now. Um, in the future, if, if we have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or more people collecting these, like the the base set um, is is designed such that as people buy it, we'll, we'll print more up until we cut that off in time. And so, right. uh, if the number of collectors increases 10x, then the number of base set moments could increase 10x for that season. But now you look back at a season one or series one, uh, which is the 2019 2020 season. Uh, moment that's only one of 3,000, that can be super rare, even though it was actually relatively easy to get as long as you were early right. enough. Yeah, right, exactly. exactly. Yeah, so I, I completely agree. And we're just closing off season one, series one, excuse me, uh, series one of, of Top Shot. Um, uh, I, I was going to, I was thinking, why don't I open a, a pack and, and kind of show off a little bit of what that looks like, what that experience yeah. looks like, and we Absolutely. can see maybe. Maybe we'll get the number one mint bowl bowl, uh, metallic gold limited edition. That that could be a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, that would gonna... be great. And then I could offer you something for that. I don't know what you know, <laughs> bowl bowl. I'm your guy. <laughs> for you, maybe I'd make the deal. Oh, there's also something else here to answer your question about how we help um, get those NBA fans to like see the value proposition. Um, right. We've partnered with uh, some NBA players. Like I said, we're working with. The uh, the Players Association. So yeah, Tyler Hero um, is is currently um, walking new collectors through NBA Top Shot. When you sign up, he'll tell you what where to go, what what the next step is, and um, it's it's very cool. He he recorded that for us, and um, and That's we've awesome. got some some fun like campaigns going on, a contest, a showcase contest where you can actually get some um, dapper credit, which is what you can use to spend in the marketplace. Uh, but we'll we'll get into that. But first, why don't I go ahead and open a pack? So, yeah, um, like I mentioned, our packs are selling out fast. We actually just launched this pack this afternoon, so Dude, it's currently crazy. available. But it's it's hopefully going to be the last. Um, I, I believe this is the last rare pack of Series One that's going to exist. So I'm going to go ahead and buy one of these. I've got some Dapper credit. I'm going to show you some of my um, my recent sales and my my like buy and sell history as, as well a little bit. But you can see currently I have uh, over $57 in Dapper Balance. That's from selling moments on the marketplace. So I'm going to buy one of these $24 packs, which is guaranteed to include a metallic gold rare moment. I like the metallic and, gold. That seems to be a little more popular than some of the other offsets for some reason. Yeah, yeah. So there's something kind of core about it. Um, also, it's just shiny. People like shiny gold. things. It's I gold. like shiny things. Yeah, absolutely. It's gold. How can go wrong with gold? 
Um, <laughs> and, and they're all numbered to 299, uh, except for the challenge rewards. Um, so the ones in packs are all numbered to 299. And if one of 3,000 is scarce, one of 299, right? It, it, very scarce. So I can see by mousing over this one here that this one has this kind of blue highlight. So I know that this is going to be my rare moment, which means okay. that these are my common me, moments hold on. here. Yeah, well, before you open it, let me add this to the stream because they're not seeing what right. they're seeing. Now oh, yeah. they can see the screen. So I, some of them, I'm sorry, you guys. We'll, we might have to open a second pack on me or something. We might have to get another one. Uh, the okay. pack is $24 for the Metallic Gold Rare Pack, and those are available right now. I've dropped a link down below. If you guys would like to click that link and check out NBA Top Shot, that is going to be your opening entry to it. Excellent. Yeah, so so this here is is the rare pack, uh, the rare moment the that blue. I was talking about. It's got the blue highlight okay. underneath. Um, we saw legendary packs. Those really go fast. Um, those are indicated by kind of this this nice multicolor under uh, uh, highlight. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and and open these in reverse order so we can get that metallic gold moment last. And let's and see let what, me, what, what are yeah go ahead. Let me just point out here for some of the people that are out there going whoa the pack's two hundred and thirty dollars are you crazy for the you know the ultimate or the legendary and and those I gotta say the value that you're getting back out of the packs guys I mean you're even if you lose a little bit because you get a real stinker of a moment most of the time you're in good shape you're not just you know ripping up money like you bought a, a blaster box for 300 bucks of prism and then there was nothing in it whatsoever it's not so boom and bust they have a safer floor yeah that's a good point um so you are guaranteed if you get that 230 dollar legendary pack that you will get a legendary moment you will get three rare moments uh we, we do break it down what's guaranteed in a pack um, so I've got a DeAndre Jordan to start things off. This is really nice. He's a serial number 674, and currently there's only a 1,000 of these made. And like I said, the series uh, has sort of like a time limit. So once, um, once we have a, um, this new season, which of course started yesterday, once it's right. fully in swing and we've got a bunch of plays from the new season uh, in Top Shot ready, then these will all be retired and, and there will be no more able to be created. So, right. uh, so, six, so for that specific moment, when you go into the next set, you say that these are still going to be printed for a little bit, or you're going to close that off completely? Because that's at a thousand right now with a circulating count, but it's going to turn into limited edition once that turns into a different moment for DeAndre in the base set. Yeah. So, so normally what we'll do is when we introduce another DeAndre Jordan into the base set, we retire the previous one, we lock in that that count exactly where it is, um, and as long as it's at least a thousand, that's kind of our floor for a common commons uh, there's always at least a thousand um to make sure that that they they don't end up more rare than a rare um uh, right, you know, right, right. some weird tweak and, and that could be confusing if, if that happened um although but but yeah we'll we'll be doing things a little bit differently in series two we'll be discussing um uh how that is i think things will be kind of more predictable in a sense and and the counts will be kind of more even we'll see we'll see how that goes but uh, yeah, so this is this is I'm ha really happy to get um, a low serial number here. Um, Those nets, man. Those nets is... look really good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So I gotta I gotta geek out a little bit over Tybul here. Tybul is uh -oh. the last rookie that we actually added into Top Shot, and right, that's right. why. Uh, and, and so and so getting a, a Tybul is is great. I think his marketplace value right now is, is pretty high just because he was relatively recently added and a lot of people still need him, uh, add him to their collection. Um, of course, like a super great player and I can click it and actually watch with this play. I'm sorry. It's going to come through a little bit, um, a little bit choppy. Uh, but a little okay. bit choppy. Yeah. Um, uh, when you, when you actually open and watch your moment here, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty clear, but um, yeah, that was a great block shot and he runs, he runs for the fast break. Uh, he gets the basket on the slam dunk. And so you can own that play. And uh, now I do. <laughs> I own number 312 of 1,000 of that of that play in the base set. And so that's pretty exciting. Um, time will actually on. get to more to run this season because who knows what Doc Rivers is going to do over there with the 76ers. That's right. Jalen Brown, that's uh, another nice one. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting some some great moments here. And this is one of those fun serial numbers. So the cool thing about everything having the serial number, and this is like the actual order in which they were minted on the Flow blockchain. Um, right. And, and then they do go, you know, one through, in this case, 2004, um, is you, you can end up with some fun, fun serial numbers. I've seen some people collect like a player's birth year. So um, you can get number 1981, you know, or whatever right. it is. Oh, oh. 
Or you could get their jersey number. You could get yes. the date of the game, and you could get random. Like I got a twenty three twenty three. I think Steph Curry, which I thought was cool because it's kind of Michael Jordan esque, you know. Yeah. So people are gonna look for, for superstition within the serial numbers. They do matter. People often mm -hmm. ask, does it matter that it's number one or number eight hundred? And what is that actually? Is that six six six? Is that what that says? So this one's sixteen sixty. Oh, oh <laughs> sixty six. Okay, I was gonna. Whoa, pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it matters. Superstition matters. <laughs> That's right. A six sixty six of of a Celtics player would be appropriate for me. I'm I'm kind of an anti Boston sports Ooh, fan. Anti Boston. I got, you. <laughs> I got another six. Speaking of anti Boston, but he used to be a, a Celtics rookie. All right. So one more base set moment here. A nine forty four. Uh, Markel Fultz, um, yeah. of Atlanta, and then we're gonna see what I've got here. Um, so again, this is going to be a metallic gold rare moment. Uh, these are numbered to 299. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that Luca is available on this, but um, a number 59, oh. Duncan Robinson. Okay, I will take that. Whoa. I will take a, a Duncan Robinson number 59. That's a three pointer. Uh, this looks like it's from the playoffs. Yeah, it's October 4th. Um, that this was an this was an awesome awesome play where where. Uh, the Heat actually did beat the Lakers in this game, and and that three pointer was a, a big part of it. Yeah, that's fantastic. But yeah, my uh, my friend down there that I got into Top Shot, he literally started with nine dollars. He's like, man, what is this, you know? And I was like, look, dude, this stuff is awesome. Buy yourself a pack, see what you can do. He opened it up. He got, I believe, there was a Giannis and maybe a James Harden or something. He yeah. sold those to me for a profit, and then he's turned that nine dollars so far into three hundred and sixty-seven dollars, <laughs> and he's enjoying it too. Like even if he wasn't making some extra numbers, it's a lot of fun. That that's a great story, and he, that is a lot of fun. And we can see right here, um, Duncan Robinson's. You can see serial number does matter in terms of what people will sell them for and what you right. can buy them for. So um, we can see uh, another uh, Duncan Robinson again. I paid twenty four dollars for this pack, and um, and it looks like I can probably sell this moment for somewhere in this range. Actually, pro potentially even more than the sixty dollar mark because it is an even lower serial number here. Now, what would have been great is if I had gotten the number 55 because we see that people are willing to pay like a five or 10 times premium to get that yeah. yeah. And this and this matters, guys, also because part of Top Shot is showcase. You have to you have to build a showcase to show off a certain specific moment, whether it's all dunks or you know, a specific team or a specific game. There's so much flexibility, and that will definitely feed into it, the whole bragging rights thing. I got a, a case full of number ones, so to speak. What you, what did you got? To show off. Fancy shit. <laughs> I've got some fun showcases. So this here is the brow showcase. Um, this the this, this is uh, one of each, and there, of course, the game winning shot that AD hit in the playoffs, uh, yelling Kobe after hitting that shot. Yeah, I've got number forty three of two seventy of that moment. That one was a challenge reward, so we can talk about challenges a little bit, a little bit of an extra bonus value that you can get if you're buying a lot of moments um, at, at the right time. Um, and, and also, it can help you sell if you want to get rid of, if you get like two of the same play and you don't want that. You can sell one of those during a challenge and, and maybe get a little bit of extra from it. Um, so I've got here four moments from LeBron, or sorry, from AD. <laughs> um, uh, just really fun plays, and and uh, so far twenty two people have liked that. So if you if you like AD and you, you like the brow, um, you can find my showcase and give me a like there. Um, I believe you guys have a contest that. going with showcase likes right now too, in, in tandem with Tyler Harrow tweeting about and, and starting to talk about Top Shot. Yeah, that might be worth talking about. So. Um, right now is actually just the best possible time to get started with Top Shot if you haven't, because if you buy a pack, then we're going to send you five dollars um, of Dapper credit so that you can buy moments to enter our showcase contest, um, and and so that'll that'll happen like on weekdays um, and and not so much over the holidays. So if you do it now, you'll probably get that on Monday of next week, um, and. And you can go on to, let's see here. We've got information about the showcase contest. Mm -hmm. But basically, you put together a showcase of the five most impressive moments from last season, whatever you think those were. If you put those in a showcase 
and you share it on either Instagram or Twitter. Uh, you, you put the right hashtag on it, um, and then you need to get 10 likes. So you can share that with friends. You're sharing it on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, you can go onto our Discord community, and people there are, are sharing your trading like crazy. Basically, yeah. <laughs> um, and and also the first time you add a, a like, you can get placed into this showcase spotlight here on the homepage, and other people can watch. So here's somebody's showcase of nice stuff that they put together. <laughs> Looks like they've got a, a dame here against the Lakers. Um, hey, Twenty six hundred two hundred, not bad. Yeah, very nice, very nice um, serial number. The, on both ends there, that's a rare moment. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop a like on this. And once you hit that 10 likes, then you'll qualify and we're gonna send out um, another $15 in Dapper credit. So so if you're doing the math here, you can buy a, a $12 pack, uh, we'll send you $5. You can use those $5 to buy five $1 moments on the marketplace if you want, uh, build a showcase with those moments and then get those 10 likes, get the requirements met and then you can get another $15 in credit sent to you. So it's kind of like win, win, win. Uh, you, you get some great moments, you get to put together a showcase, show it off, and then we're gonna send you some extra dapper credit, um, which you can spend however you want on the showcase, um, uh, on building your, your showcase even better. Um, and what's really cool about the showcase contest is the people who get the most likes are gonna, we're gonna take a look at the top 20 and we're gonna have our internal panel of judges, NBA fans at Dapper Labs, are gonna watch those 20, choose our 10 favorite. And we talked about how those low serial numbers are really important. Well, we right. released these moments early on, early adopters, which you could only get in the very first months, a uh, couple of months of, of the product, mostly in the closed beta. So most people didn't even have access to the early adopters moments impacts while they were available. Um, but we reserved um, the Alex Caruso uh, early serial number. So that number one through 10, we didn't put those in packs. We held onto those as a special prize to give out later. And now it's later. So the oh, top man. 10 uh, showcases that we like. So so you gotta, be, you gotta be one of the top 20 vote getters to be in the running. And we're gonna choose our top 10 favorites. And, and each of those top 10 that we choose as favorites are gonna get one of those Alex Caruso early adopters moments, serial numbers one through 10, depending on where we rank you as the top 10 of those showcases in the contest. You guys better go and like my NBA Jam Dunk City Edition showcase, man. You better click down on this link. My name on there is Vegas Fine 777 in case you guys are wondering. Throw a like over there. We need to get that. And then there, I heard something about a legendary pack or something. That's right. So the number one, okay, so what happens is, is we're, we're going we're gonna to find our 10 favorites. And the top four there, we're going to then put that vote to the community. We're going to share uh, uh, like a Twitter poll, and we're going to say, which of these is the most, the, the showcase that has the most impressive plays of the 2019, 2020 season. Um, and whoever gets the most votes here and look at this, you are, you are already on fire with 32 likes here. I'm going to yeah, go yeah. ahead and, and add yeah, my yeah. own like to your NBA jam. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to break it, but for a good cause. So thank now you, you're up to you. 33. Um, and, and so, Whoever wins that Twitter contest is going to win two legendary packs. So again, those packs run $230 each. And what's more is they're uh, sold out packs. So you couldn't even buy them for money um, yeah. right now. And, and so you can hold on to those packs, you know, savor them, open them 10 years from now. Eventually you're going to be able to buy and sell those unopened packs if, they, if you leave them unopened. Or you can tear into it and see what you get, which is, of course, the most fun thing to do. I have about 10 unopened packs, by the way. When I buy, I like to buy a few to open, and then I like to keep at least one of each that I can get my hands on because I think that those long-term with the success of Top Shot are really going to appreciate and value like we see with regular wax. And if you look at you know, Giannis 2013 Prism, those sealed boxes are thousands of dollars just to get a shot. So I don't know what the upside is long-term, but it, there's definitely going to be some upside for sure. Yeah, we want to make sure that that, option was available for, for people. Like I said, the marketplace isn't yet open for, for selling those packs, but that is coming and you can hold on to them for now. Um, or you can be tempted by them in your collection and, and, and wanting to hit that open button. Um, do, do we want to open one of those early adopters packs here? And, uh, do you, are you that kind of guy or is that what you're ready to I'm, do? 
<laughs> Let, let's open one of those. I, I can't help myself, right? Um, eventually, this I'm just going to run out of these. So this this is from early on, right? One of the one of the very first um, packs that we had available in the product. Um, right. Um, let's let's just see what was, what's been hiding in this. I've, I have I've, a couple of these moments that were put on the marketplace. I scooped them up because I thought early adopters might be good long term for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Three, got a three pack. So, yep. All right. And so we might see some some interesting lower serial numbers. Like the range can be kind of all over the place with these. So here's we've got a Lamarcus Aldridge on the Spurs. It was looks like it was in a losing effort there, but a nice shot. That's not um, Lamarcus, sorry. On the Lakers, <laughs> number 990. Uh, Talking about there, so. there we go. Uh the fan favorites. I love this play. The hustle. Oh, it's Just, great! What a fun block. Caruso <laughs> um, is underrated, man, and that head. I, I agree. I agree. He he maybe wasn't at his best <laughs> last night, but you know, I'm I'm always happy to watch him play. Um, and and this this whole play is just. Uh, it's it's a really great like shows off a whole team effort making sure that 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 ball got nowhere near the basket. Yeah, um, and, and number nine ninety is another fun serial number. I like it. And you guys can see when the moments are displayed, you see the little cube, you see what the moment preview is on the left, and then on the right, you have what's related to the type of moment it is. So you can see that the base set has the Spurs logo, but then the early adopter has the cool graphic. And that's why I think people like that metallic gold, because it's actually in metallic gold. And what makes the hollow, which is the MMX, am I right on that? Uh, so cool is that those are actually in multicolor uh, down that logo, which is really, really attractive to the eye. Yeah, we can show off a couple of those. Um, so the Alex Caruso's here. Um, these are these are base set moments that you can buy of Alex Caruso for three or five. But this is the early adopters, as, as you pointed out. Um, it has that special side panel, and um, yeah, the the moments look really cool. Here's the gold you can see um, for for the Clippers. You can see for the Mavs. Um, and we have these other sets like Run It Back. We just released. That's the pack that sold out in five minutes. Um, that was great. I got some of that. That that was that was. There's some fun stuff in there, um, like Carmelo, um, and and so that's in a special set. And and uh, the other thing that you can see is for rare moments, they have this kind of neon glow outline. It's based on the yep. team color, and and it gets uh, crazier rare, looking as you go up in rarity. Yeah. So let's look at one of these legendaries here. These are the moments that come in two hundred thirty dollar packs, and as you can see. Like you're getting your money's worth. These are these are moments that that hold some value. Um, like they're very scarce, and people love to hold on to them. And so they just uh, look so like, awesome. There's just something that's just really attractive about that. I mean, look at the graphics on the Pascal Siakam up there. I don't know oh what set goodness. that is, but man, that is amazing. this one's cosmic. Cosmic was was the first legendary set that we released. Uh, this artwork just blows me away. I freaking I love, love it. it. It's 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 an original piece of artwork from one of our artists. Um, we're fortunate to have some really great artists on the team, um, and uh, we kind of worked with the NBA to make sure that we had something that's that like fit the vibe. And um, and and it's this very top shot thing. And and yeah, I completely love yeah, the cosmic it, set. Awesome. And and yeah, anyone who's lucky enough to get some of those cosmic moments, um, they're they're. Um, they're very awesome, yeah. And and as you can see, some people aren't willing to part with them. For yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of money. Some shoot the moon opportunities out there, you know, that are not probably a, yeah, you know, you know. for the moon. That's right. You never, you never know. I mean, I really like looking through the marketplace. That's what we were looking at a second ago, folks. And I really enjoy looking through, uh, you know, either from a poker perspective or just a sports card collector and investor perspective, looking through and trying to find things that I think are probably going to be worth more either because of attention or because it's short printed. I mean, there's so many ways that you can find a nook in the cranny, so to speak, that's still undervalued for Top Shot. Yeah, and you can see um, here we've got Dirk Nowitzki, Steve Nash. These are from the recent Run It Back drops. So this here is just the latest sales. And you can see in the last, what, five minutes, um, mm -hmm. hundreds of dollars of sales have taken place on the marketplace. So things are constantly moving. Um, I, I promised earlier that I was going to show uh, some of my recent sales and purchases <laughs> here. Yeah. So you can see I sold it to Marcus Cousins for $47. That helped finance that uh, premium pack that yeah. we opened earlier. Um, Very nice. <laughs> uh, uh, I've been uh, picking up uh, uh, Dennis Schroeder. 
Um, he's uh, I got to shoot really, I was really impressed with his play uh, with the Lakers um, last night, and I, I realized I didn't have his metallic gold moment yet, so I picked up mm -hmm. one of those. Um, I think fourteen dollars was a great price for that. And so I lost Kobe White that. earlier. His metallic. Oh gold. yeah, yeah. I'm 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 excited to see what he does this year. Um, I, I think I think he's he's got a lot going for him. It's one thing I really like about Top Shot is the transparency. You know, the people are on Discord that are making the game. They're listening. They're there. They're available. And every aspect of it is transparent. It's all see-through to you. Do you think that gives you an edge on something like a Panini or a Tops where everything is sort of in-house and that the basic user doesn't get full access? Yeah, so that's one of those benefits of blockchain that I, that I harp on as so important. And I truly believe that once you experience that, once you experience that transparency, it's really hard to go back to, you know, the <laughs> dinosaur be, world right. again. <laughs> yes, exactly, right? Um, because because yes, they have some some stuff that 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 has serial numbers, but um, like having having a little bit of of like insight into how many of a thing is available versus knowing the entire history, um, right? You can see you can see exactly like. Is one person buying up the market? Like you can even kind of tell that. Um, right. And you uh, might be able to intercept like, them. You know, you, like I see a true. guy buying like five moments, and I'm like, yo, I'm gonna go grab the next four of them. You know, the hell with this guy. You just, <laughs> I'll intercept you. <laughs> There's a lot of fun that you can have in the marketplace just browsing the marketplace. I know some people spend hours a day just watching recent recent sales, browsing, looking at new listings, um, trying to find the, those um, those good deals. Um, Steve here, I saw Steve made some purchases. Uh, the joke on Discord is that when you sell a moment, you get excited, and when you see that Steve bought it, you get sad because you know that he he uh, that you underpriced your moment because he's really good at, at finding those deals. <laughs> Damn it, Steve. And that's the other thing, you know, related to the marketplace, there's already sites that are popping up and people that are working with programs related to Top Shot, like intangible.market, which can show you the value of certain things. It can tell you the estimated value uh, of your packs. And then also Swish, which is building a fantasy basketball game based on Top Shot moments. So was that part of your intention or how do you feel about that? Absolutely. We knew we knew from CryptoKitties that, that when you build your product on the blockchain, all of that data is open and people love playing with data. It's fun, right? Yeah. I mean, I built a tool for CryptoKitties. Again, that's how I ended up joining the Dapper Labs that. team. And I right. could only do that because everything was on the blockchain. Everything was open and transparent. And um, and so we knew that that from CryptoKitties, people would do that. And we're really excited about what's been built here. And you mentioned Intangible Market. Um, this is a new tool in Intangible Market. It's still in its early stages. This gives you a kind of conservative valuation of the moments on your account. Have you run this on your account yet? Yeah, actually, I got like a couple thousand dollars worth of Top Shot. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 pretty nice. Um, I ran this on my account and I was like, I, I was of course <laughs> lucky enough to get some of those early moments. Um, you know, I've been in the closed right, right. beta and I've been participating. And that's one of those things, um, We've got NBA fans, we've got collectors, um, we've got blockchain enthusiasts in the company, and we've got everybody actually interact with the product in a fully transparent way. Obviously, if we were trying to take advantage of information that we had, like that would be terrible for the product. But the thing right. we feel great about is everything is completely transparent. You can look me up, Alan Falcon. Everybody who's on Discord knows my name, uh, knows my profile. You can see what moments I'm buying. You can see what packs I'm buying. Um, yeah, let's, you see let's take a look at stuff. Steve. Show me Steve's oh account goodness. value. Let's take a look at what oh my Steve goodness. has to do. This might take a while to load. <laughs> hey, guys, um, this is right. looking, Steve, the guy that we know from YouTube, just so you guys are aware. <laughs> um, oh, man. Just in the hall, just just his his one uh, LeBron James uh, uh, Hollow Twenty Twenty moment here, uh, fifty six hundred dollars of value. That, that's if you look crazy. Look at his whole, whole account, and oh my goodness, has he bought a lot Come of on, moments? Steve, what are you doing? <laughs> he had, he he is uh, very deep in Top Shot. And I, I love, love that the account name is just as basic. You know what I mean? It's just like Steve <laughs> on Top Shot. <laughs> just Steve. Exactly. Just Steve. <laughs> according, according to his own tool here, he's got over $118,000 conservatively 
estimated worth of moments in Top Shot. And and I can almost guarantee you he spent significantly less than that um, uh, of his own like initial outlay because um, because he is so good at finding the deals before everybody else notices how yeah. good of a deal they are. Finding patterns, it's very important. I've bought a number of things just on that information or at least perceived information alone. You get that a lot from researching cards and looking like a guy like DeMontis Sabonis, who is going to basically take over the Pacers. You can get some of his out of 275 moments for literally under $20. And when the attention hits, I mean, that could easily be a hundred dollar moment. I mean, it's, it's and not. We've seen, we've seen, we've seen when Tyler Harrow took off in the playoffs, right? His moments right. were kind of under the radar for a long time. Uh, he was, he was a promising rookie he had some good he had some good moments in in top shot he he had some some promise but when he took off when he did the snarl um yeah, the those, snarl. Tyler Arrow, <laughs> those moments uh like shot up in value in the marketplace and so if you were if you were on that train before the hype hit then you know you were ready to take advantage and um and and you know you can still argue that we're early we'll see um, we'll see how, how some of these moments go. And I mentioned um, <laughs> that Tyler will walk you through the product here. And so um, I, I have my yeah. sound off. But he's actually uh, inviting you to check out his rookie debut moment. Um, you, you will hear Tyler Harrow's uh, own voice inviting you into features <laughs> of the product. And he's awesome. talking about um, what he was thinking in this moment. Um, I love this moment of Tyler Harrow, right? Um, he had the steal. The team is down. He has a chance at a pretty easy two there, but he's thinking, no, I'm going to go for the win. I can hit this three-pointer. He he just he, – he has all confidence. He nails it, and um, and it this just made a, for an amazing moment to own. It's so fascinating to me, just that aspect where you guys could just put information from him directly on that moment. Now, not just from an advertising perspective, do you think that that's something that you might do with future moments? You see other guys just adding a bit of information to it. Yeah, I think I think that's absolutely something that would be really fun for us to do, and that that is something that we're looking at. And as I said, we do have that relationship with the Players Association. They right. got us the introduction to Tyler, um, for example, you know, and and then we started talking to him, and he's he's really into um, digital goods, he's he, or digital technology, and um, you know, the cutting edge. And so he was yeah. excited about this as well. Um, Talk and to speaking me about of the star. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Just I just wanted to mention. Speaking of the snarl, the great thing about this product is um, that when something happens that's meme worthy, you know that the like right. everybody's right, talking. Right, about, right, right. We can capture it. We can yeah. make it into a collectible, and you can be one of seventy nine people in the world who own it. Um, and, and 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 people can you know say you know give you five hundred and fifty five dollars yeah. if they want to take it from you. Yeah. And then this is another great example of the artwork um, that I just love. Oh, this yeah, is from the that's five gorgeous set. too. Just crazy, fun, uh, outlandish. I love it. <laughs> it reminds me of downtown Vegas uh, art that's on all the buildings. Yeah. There. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah, so what I was going to say is, uh, you know, people are going to get into this. You know, you just started with Run It Back. You got guys like Tim Duncan, Nowitzki. We want to see Michael Jordan. We want to oh, see yeah. Bird, Magic Johnson. We want to see Kareem from the Bucks vintage days. When, how, tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, so the way that I look at things here, we've got a really long-term outlook on Top Shot, right? This is yeah. this is not this is not something that 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 is here today, gone tomorrow, right? This is this right. is the, the future of sports collectibles as far as we're concerned. So we've got a long time to kind of bring them in, make sure that we do it right. And with someone like MJ, so we have an we have um a deal with the Players Association and with the NBA, which gives us um, the ability to work with with most retired players as well, um, but not all of them. Some people, some some players have um, basically set up so that they have their own licensing deals. And so, right. when you're talking about MJ, when you're talking about Kobe's estate, um, we, we're going to have to go and make an individual deal with MJ uh, with Kobe's estate in order to get their moments in Top Shot. I don't see that that that's going to be a problem, right? I, I, I anticipate that we're going to be able to have those conversations and uh, we're going to find something that everybody's very happy with um, and that that day will come. But I'm also in no rush. Like I said, this is a very right. long-term 
product. And we have the whole world of NBA uh, current plays and, and the entire history to build up uh, collectibles from. And so we're going to be introducing those over time. We're going to make sure we don't flood the market, you know, uh, right. and that every time uh, there are these new plays being introduced, that they're, it's a big deal and, and that it's exciting and that they have their, their, their time uh, to, to shine. And, 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 um, and so, and so like, I fully anticipate that we will get the, the, the Larry Birds, the MJs, um, and, and it's just going to be a matter of time. Uh, you want to make sure you're signed up for the email list so you don't miss out on that opportunity to hit that drop. Uh, right. I imagine those <laughs> are going to sell out insanely quickly. Um, I want the Kareem Skyhook, man. I got to tell you, yeah. that's what I'm looking most forward to. Yeah, so there, there are so many. <laughs> you also have a... Sorry, you also have an NBA hardcore. I hear about this. I see it. I read about it. I want to know because obviously as a guy who's into games my entire life, magic, poker, whatever, games are important to me. And it seems like that would be another entire explosion of attention if that game app ends up being amazing. So tell me what you can about NBA hardcore. Yeah, so we're currently still in active development of that. We've been talking so far about NBA Top Shop, the collectibles experience, um, which, by the way, works just as well on your phone as it does on desktop. And you mentioned the Samsung app. We actually won an the award there. Um, yes. if, if you have that, you can you can experience this collectibles um, within the Samsung App Store that, that's available. Um, but frankly, you can just load it up on your web browser, and it'll work just as well um, you know, on your iPhone or whatever. So you don't have to have the Samsung phone. Uh, to have access to that. But that's all the collectibles experience. And at the same time, we are actively developing what we're currently calling NBA Hardcourt. And that is a free-to-play mobile game that is a game where you're running around on a court, shooting baskets, um, competing, trying to get the high, trying, trying to you know score the most points to win a game, to, to progress. And um, the really exciting thing about that to me is, like, yeah, it's fun that we're making an, uh, an NBA game uh, mobile game, uh, but unlike every other NBA mobile game, uh, this is going to be one where you can use these digital collectibles that you have in NBA Top Shot, and and these are actually going to help you um, like essentially uh, add value to your players, make them stronger, right? right? So so you can you can choose the plays that you own and essentially like slot them in with your characters in the game to, to for example, give them access to special ability to uh, increase their three-point shot percentage, that sort of thing. And the right. more rare your moment, the higher tier it is, right? A legendary is going to have more impact in the game than a common. Um, and and it's something that I think is, is, is going to just open, like you said, a million doors because you're going to have people who... Are just playing the game and um, and and want to uh, you know want want to to kind of get a leg up on their friends, for example, and right. and um, and instead of doing the normal in-app purchase thing, which which I, I believe will be available, you'll have the option to buy these collectibles, which hold real value, and and use those to to make your team even stronger. So beyond the pure collectible value. Um, which, which I admit is where my heart is, right? Because I'm right. just such a right, right, right. Yeah. Same, same but thing. <laughs> in addition to that, like you just have this extra value of 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 those moments being useful in um, uh, in, in hard court. And so there's not a whole lot that I can share other than it's an active development. We're going to be um, we're going to be doing uh, um, kind of an its own kind of early access to right. to certain people. Uh, put me in feedback. on that list, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's get you on it. Let's get you on All it right. so we can Absolutely. get your feedback. We have we question. have this in front of some players and we've been getting feedback and 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 people are excited and, and enjoying what we have so far. So that's that's awesome. Great. I'm super excited about that. My only question would be, you know, obviously when you have a, a, a rarer moment, a legendary, it should obviously provide more value in the game than just some common, but are you going to focus a bit on balance so that the average guy can still win sometimes? I mean, there's got to be Absolutely. enough variance that the low man on the totem pole with his common team <laughs> can still get in there. Right. Uh, yeah. There's, that's, there's that's, this whole kind of progression system essentially. And like so, a role playing game. 
similar. Some Dragon way. Warrior. All right. You don't have to say it anymore. Yes. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what's the craziest thing that people will be able to do with their Top Shot moments in the future? Craziest thing we haven't dreamed up yet. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I fully believe because this is on chain, because we already have teams like Intangible building these marketplace tools. There's another team called Swish, which announced, I believe yesterday, that they're building a fantasy game yeah, yeah, entirely absolutely. themselves on the web you, that uses your moments. So you can essentially slot in players that you have through moments that you own to, um, to build a special kind of fantasy team and compete against others. And there's gonna be prizes. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's going to be really exciting. Uh, and, and that's something that can be built by the community because of the blockchain and um, isn't something, you know, that we were anticipating exactly. Like we knew that people would build, but right. we don't know what people will build. And along those lines, know. we've even heard that there's um, a developer who's putting together technology that will allow you to, for example, bring your phone with your moment on it uh, to an NBA player once we're past these COVID times and whatnot, and you can actually right. interact with another human being safely. Uh, <laughs> and, and they'll be able to sign your moment, you know, that, that's what they're working on. Sign your so moment? Sign your moment. And sign it's even like moment? graphically um, proven, you know, that Tyler Hero actually signed yeah. this on such and such a date, right? So you have the built-in authenticity uh, backed by the blockchain without having to like have Dude. an expert sign off on it. Like the, the possibility. You're killing me, Alan. I almost just passed out and had a heart attack. To actually have them sign it on your phone and just have that boom, like who PSA authentication, blockchain. Signed moments. Exactly. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Well, speaking of sports cards, do you own sports cards? You say you got a lot of magic cards, but do you yeah. have like PSA graded cards, stuff like that? So I, I've I've avoided the PSA thing. Um, the the whole so so send, sending cards off uh, just like I, I still can't get. I, I become very <laughs> risk averse, <laughs> and I just don't, I don't even want to, I don't even want to think about and deal with that. Um, uh, I got into the, the project 2020 stuff very early on. Very nice. Um, and, um, but I ended, I ended up, uh, so, so I had a trout Ermsey, um, that, that I got like, you know, for 20 bucks from tops, um, when those came out and then that whole thing exploded. I ended up selling that on, on stock X because it was like, the value just got way too high for me. I like, like, I love right. this card not that much. But you're crazy. <laughs> uh, Exactly. Exactly. People were just a little bit too crazy, um, uh, and, and so and so I've got those. I've participated in some live breaks. I've actually got right here uh, with me. This is unfortunately a, a sophomore, uh, Luca. But uh, you know, okay. I've, I've got I've got oh, some nice. moments. I've got some cards. <laughs> Let's see. Um, uh, but most of my sports cards are actually um, more more from the eighties, nineties. Um, uh, I. I actually got into collecting because I got a, a guidebook for sports collecting that, uh, that, uh, you know, I think we all got that guidebook. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. With, with the um, fake Hanus Wagner, the T206. Exactly like the green <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sure we, I'm sure many of us have stories like this or have heard stories like this, but I was young. I, this was my first exposure to those cards. And, um, and I opened the the face fake Honus Wagner. I didn't realize it was fake. I was just like, okay, right. let's see how much this card is worth. Go through right. it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm freaking out. I run over to my parents. I'm like, oh my goodness. And they're like, um, let, let's, let's like, tell you something. Well, <laughs> hate to break your heart and everything. Yeah. <laughs> candy bar, perhaps. All right. So um, where do you see Top Shot in one year? And where do you see Top Shot in five years? Yeah, those, those are great questions. So in a year, I see this um, meeting a lot more people, a lot more people like being exposed to it, finding out about it, uh, looking into it, and then it clicking in their heads. And right. and stuff like our campaign here with Tyler Heroes, ex example of, of a way that we're, we're helping to make that happen as quickly as possible. But... Um, uh, also, within a year, we're, we're planning to have hard court out there, and I think that that's going to bring in a whole lot of people who um, who are playing the game and now uh, are introduced to the collectibles and to this concept of owning moments in an all new way, where where it feels very natural 
and and then they're coming into this from there. So I think in a, in a year, I expect that there's going to be a whole lot of people collecting and um, a whole lot of awareness of, of this product. And then um, in five years, wow. Um, so I think we're going to... <laughs> That's right. I, I, um, I believe it's Alto in our community who's who's, who's uh, working on on building that out, um, and we're offering like whatever support we can to help make sure that that happens because that's such an exciting idea. I believe that that within five years we should we should be able to get there, have that that kind of that kind of crazy uh, interactions with the blockchain in in all new ways. Um, some of the crazier things that I think are going to happen within five years are like uh, 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 rookie trading funds. Like you'll be able to like, like the way that you can buy and sell um, like groups of, of stocks, right? Uh, mutual funds and stuff like that. I think right. you'll be able to buy into like 2019, 20 rookies um, as a, as like buy a share and there, there will be funds. Um, and part of that is like a lot of the thing that people love about crypto is the decentralized finance right defi and um when you when you add nba collectibles into that mix i think crazy things are going to happen and we're going to see that play out over the next five years but i'm just most accept, excited as a fan i think that you're going to be able to build your ultimate dream collection of plays that are meaningful to you um right. you know games that you were at that 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 like had an impact on you um you know moments moments that like cemented your fandom um and and those are just gonna be available and and you're gonna be able to put together like these really fun uh showcases um i'm hoping that we're gonna have some stuff we're gonna have some like ar stuff going on um you know these are our hopes and dreams um i bought one of these like holographic picture frames on kickstarter and uh i'm, I'm planning oh, yeah. to, to shut nice. some of my moments in there and be able to show that off um and, yep, and talk like about the that. possibilities are, are endless yeah all right. This, I mean, I'm, I'm, okay. So, a uh, couple more questions here, real quick, and then we'll open up the chat for five minutes and see what the people think, since they've been largely just kind of on the side here. When are ultimates coming out? Ultimates are super cool. So, let me see if I can remember how to get here. Uh, yeah. Um, so, we've so far released commons, rares, and legendaries, um, but we've been minting the very first. NFTs, the non-fungible tokens, the collectibles that we created on the Flow blockchain were actually our Genesis set of Ooh, NBA. Sounds good. <laughs> That's this here. These things look so cool. They're like yeah. animated, they're kind of glitchy. This like holographic logo is like spinning in the background. Like they they are they're insane. We minted one each of each of the first 150 plays that we had in Top Shot, which includes Giannis, includes Tyler Hero, includes John Moran, includes Zion Williamson, LeBron James. Um, well, I know what I want for Christmas. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so and so we we did mint these. We wanted to make sure that the awareness was out there and that like people knew that this existed before we actually put right. those out. Um, and so we've been sitting on them very patiently, impatiently, uh, because we want it, we want to have these out in the world. But there is this ultimate tier. The thing about ultimate tier is instead of appearing in packs, those will only be available at auction. We want to make sure that those legendary moments that are out there, um, that that people feel very secure in their value and so forth. And so um, these these auctions. For the Genesis moments, once those sell, or the other ultimate tier um, moment, Platinum Ice, uh, which there's only one of three of every play that gets added into Top Shot. We meant the first three is is the Platinum Ice moments. Um, we're only going to be making those available at auction with um, a significant reserve price, and it's right, a situation right. where if someone isn't willing to pay that much, we're happy to continue to own it forever. Exactly. No problem. Um, but uh, I, I definitely believe that that there will be some people who will be very excited at the chance to own a one of one, you know, LeBron that was that kicked off NBA Top Shot, this new uh, digital collectible, this new paradigm in sports collecting. Um, so those exist. 
and they will be available at auction. Again, if you sign up on the website, get your email in there, we'll send you emails to let you know when fun new drops happen. And of course, when, when that first auction happens, uh, we'll, we'll be sure to let that mailing list know so you can keep an eye on it. Or if you're, if you're feeling up for it, you know, get in on the action. All right, guys, let's open up the chat for a couple minutes here before we bounce out and watch some basketball this evening. Hit me with some questions. Is there a watch list function? So currently there is not. It is definitely something that we've heard a, a number of requests for and that we're excited to build. Um, we're, we're, we've, if you've been with us since the closed beta, you've seen us evolve a ton. We've been adding features basically nonstop. Um, we've we've been like i said making sure that we find ways to communicate what the product is all about and help people understand if they're nba fans who maybe don't understand the digital collectibles already um and so and so some of the things that we want to add include like a watch list feature that's going to let you um uh say you know keep an eye on something so when it hits a certain price threshold comes out for the first time you can make sure that you're aware of that uh an offers feature is also something that we really want where you can instead of just shopping seeing what prices people have listed a moment for you can be like look i really want this like i need this bowl bowl number one like uh, i will yeah. give you a thousand dollars right whatever it is um we're gonna add that offers feature so people can make um offers on particular moments and basically get the other half of the market. So we have the sell side, we're, we're going to have that buy side market as well. All right. When account will become, uh, they're already rolling out the ability to withdraw funds. And if you want to fast track that contact support, and I believe they will help you with that. Yeah, we've got, um, I think already hundreds of people, um, uh, with that ability with to, to withdraw funds and we're, we're constantly adding people, um, and, and if you want to get on that list, just just reach out. And we're just making sure again that that everything is is um, working with our systems, and, and and that we're able to track all of that and make sure that um, you know all the funds are safe, as they say. All right, I see some moments are exactly the same, common and rare, uh, just a different colored border. Will this change in future series? Like a common cannot be used as a rare, so sort of exclusivity among rarity. Yeah, so this was something where um, we were kind of looking at it as equivalent to um, some of the parallels that you can get in the physical collecting world, right? It can be fun to build up a rainbow collection of, of those prisms um, and, and have the same, you know, play, the same, the same card in, in multiple um, versions in the physical world. And so we thought it might be really fun for people to be able to collect the same play in multiple sets in the top shot world we got the feedback um pretty strongly from collectors once we did release this for series one that um while that's interesting it's more interesting to have that exclusivity and so for series two which again is starting with the new play new new games that are you know that started yesterday um we're going to be working to make sure that moments are a lot more exclusive so when a moment appears in the base set it's not the same play that's going to appear in a uh, rare set and legendary set, um, certainly not with the same frequency that it happened in series one. And we're going to continue to take a look at that and see how that works and how people uh, like it. And um, you mentioned that we're pretty active on Discord. We're constantly talking to people. We're constantly seeking feedback. We're going to see how that works with everybody and adjust accordingly. But yeah, in series two, um, I would not be expecting to see that same sort of thing where that same play appears in multiple sets. Because um, while we thought it could be fun, it turns out maybe the exclusivity will be more fun. So we're going to see how that plays out. Yeah, and I think for the for the base set at least, you know, it's interesting to go and find which player has moments that are specifically in only one form versus others. So you can kind of get like a whole conglomeration of how to collect in that case. You can find that one that was only a common, so that might wait, make that specific moment worth more. Or with the case of like Zion, he's got that block that comes in like eight different versions. So that one might be slightly less valuable unless somebody's, you know, collecting a set or something like that. Uh, yeah, I think if you're able to collect that whole set of that Zion play, like yeah. that, that, cool. that takes that another cool. level. Exactly. Fresco wants to know if there will be any giveaways. And we mentioned earlier they are doing a giveaway. You buy a pack, you get five bucks, you get 10 shares or 10 likes on your showcase. They're going to give you another 15. So you can get a few bucks for free if you're looking for something tasty in that regard. 
Are there moments, are the moments you've purchased exclusive to you or they can they still be viewed on YouTube highlights? Yeah, so um, what we we actually work with the NBA, um, NBA E, which is the entertainment division. They actually produce a lot of those highlights for, um, you know, Sports Center and 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 whatnot. Um, you know, they're masters of of their domain, and they we work with them to actually produce the video content for NBA Top Shot. And so we have access to all of the different video angles and all of the different um, uh, ways of viewing the play. And so you get a unique experience with the top shot moments where um, obviously like, you know, uh, LeBron's Kobe tribute dunk that he did the, the, the 360 windmill, um, right. you know, you will see that on YouTube, of course, but the version of it that you get in top shot is a version that was created for top shot. And, um, and, and isn't like exactly the same that you would find, you know, on YouTube or whatnot. Um, but of course the key differentiator there is, is that it's, uh, ownable in Top Shot and uh, not ownable on YouTube, of course. Yes. And yes, are there going to be vintage moments made? They're going to be rolling that out slowly over time and as they get permissions and make deals with the players. All right, Alan, let's wrap it up this evening and go check out some basketball. I want to thank you so much for coming on today, hanging out with me and being the first guest on Knights of the Card Table. Who knows where this is going either? So I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. thank you so much for having me. And thanks time. for letting me geek out over Top Shot. Absolutely. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the flip side. And if you've got any other questions, hit me up on Twitter over here or check out the Discord for NBA Top Shot and you can meet us all up in there. Have a wonderful evening, guys, and enjoy your basketball.